Hello and welcome to Detroit Reforms. I'm your host, DJ Oliver, coming to you from Eastern Market. Eastern Market has always been a gathering place for Metro Detroiters to enjoy shopping for fresh, locally grown produce, getting the best cuts of meat to grill, and just taking in all the local beauty this place has to offer. It's also been a place that invites artists to create large murals to share the messages they believe in in hopes to stimulate conversation and change for the better. Today, I get to show you a few of these murals. First one is this one by Sydney G. James. We caught up with her as she was creating this piece. Here she is as she tells us what she's trying to convey in her works. I think a good piece of art makes you feel some type of way, whether it's discomfort or it gives you a thought that you may not have had. It's like more of a discussion piece or like you're supposed to be bothered by it. You're supposed to be moved by it, touched in some type of way. I actually started my career as an art director for an advertising agency and that kind of led me to move to California because I had like a different vision and I ended up doing art for television. So. I was like a ghost artist for a show called Lincoln Heights, ABC Family. One of the main characters on the show was a prodigal artist, but she couldn't really draw, she was an actor. <laughs> so I did all the artwork that was supposed to be hers. Somebody knew that I was an artist, and people automatically assume if you're an artist that you're a painter. And, and I could paint. And they said, hey, they have these art shows at this hotel in Beverly Hills. I already signed you up for it. I need you to paint some things. So that's when I started painting as a fine artist, is for that show, and it just kind of grew from there. I came back home to Detroit from LA because I knew it was a resurgence happening in Detroit, and I knew it was gonna happen through art like it does many other cities that have gone through the revitalization process. I don't need to be at the forefront of said revitalization. I just wanna be amongst the names that, hey, this artist was here. Coney Gardens is where I started doing public art in Detroit. I was doing little community projects where I was erecting art from the ground. I want my viewers to experience whatever I was feeling at the time of the painting. And if my viewers don't do that, then I don't think I did a good job at the painting. And I think that's the difference between like the illustration part of me and the fine art part of me. Now my intention is, I need you to know, not necessarily what I was thinking, but absolutely what I was feeling when I was painting this piece. I am using my art to create social change by making public art with specific messages. For instance, I'm working on a body of work and it's called Appropriated Not Appreciated. Um, speaking on black women issues and to introduce that work, I actually painted myself nude and I put myself on the floor as a literal doormat. Some people were like super bothered by like, oh my God, because they did have like an alternative way to get into the door. So they had an option. Like some people step on people because they don't care. I don't care that you're lying there. I don't care that this is a painting. It's on the floor, so I'm supposed to step on it. And other people really thought about it like, wait a minute, am I supposed to step on it? Can I step on it? What is this bigger message that, that this woman has? I think people got from that piece that a discussion definitely needs to happen, that I am a woman and I don't want to be treated like garbage. I think it's important to keep the message going so people understand that I mean it, that I'm passionate about this subject. Being an artist, you don't necessarily have to be an activist, but I think we fall into it because from the beginning of time, hieroglyphics or the writings on the wall, we always were the head of propaganda and the head of change. And I might change my message, it might evolve later. But right now, this is what I'm focused on because I do want people to know that wasn't a gimmick. She really means it. Let's talk about it. Murals in the Market is a collaboration between Interstate Gallery and Eastern Market Corporation, where it's 45 to 50 artists at one time in this condensed area, which is Eastern Market, and we paint murals all over the walls. What I did last year is I recreated the Death Row Vibe magazine cover with Suge Knight, Dr. Dre, Snoop Dogg, and Tupac, but I put myself as Suge Knight. I added Tylon Sawyer, Tiff Massey, and Rashawn Rucker. So I really just wanted to highlight Detroit artists. 
the second mural is actually in line with appropriated, not appreciated. But it also is still paying homage to those three artists. So I'm painting a woman, a black woman, she's holding up a protest sign. And actually it's paying homage to a writer friend too, Shahirazad Parrish as well. So she's holding up a protest sign. And she has one of Thailand's cult masks in her pocket. And Rashawn Rucker is working on a series where he's morphing pigeons with black men. So I have a pigeon tugging at her hair. And then she's wearing a Tiff Massey bracelet. And the, the protest sign will have a Shahrazad Parish poem on it. I would like people to be super uncomfortable by looking at this piece. Like inspired from one standpoint, because it is massive and it's painted hopefully well, but I want people to be bothered enough to really talk about an uncomfortable conversation. Because I think really that's how social change happens. People have to get comfortable with being uncomfortable. And I think that's where it starts. The uncomfortable conversation that needs to happen is people need to acknowledge that racism does exist, even in the smallest forms. It just does. I didn't make it so. You didn't make it so. It just does. But nothing is going to get better if we don't even talk about it. My process is definitely drawing it out first and like mapping it out. I use human figures because we're landscapes. My House of Mirrors series actually started because my younger cousin, he's a couple years younger than me, has a degenerative eye disease. So he'll be blind very soon. And I called him one day, well, I'm gonna start off, I'm gonna paint a self-portrait of you. How do you see yourself? And then he described it to me, how he saw himself in a mirror. I was like, I'm gonna paint you on a mirror based on how I think you see yourself. But it got bigger, like the idea just expanded. It just blew up because then I started paying attention to human behavior in general and we all have self-esteem issues and so I just made the House of Mirrors about self-perception in general. Like I painted another resident at the time, her name is Desi, and I don't care if it was three o'clock in the morning we were out here working in the studio, she would have on rouge lipstick. So I was like, yeah, I gotta paint you. I painted um, a young man who I was working with at the time. His father had passed, like maybe a week or two after I met him, but he was still coming to work. So I was like, I'm gonna paint you brushing your teeth. And, it's, and that one is called like keeping it together because no matter what, like if people, if we go through tragedies and stuff, we, it's the daily things that really keeps us together. I'm pretty free as an artist, which is why the illustration thing probably wasn't gonna work for me very long anyway. I like to do exactly what I want to do at all times. If I feel like painting something about social injustice, then I'm going to paint it. You can learn more about Sydney G. James as well as all the artists we feature on DetroitPerforms.org.